So now in section 4.5, we're going to look at two types of probability. The first type is where we're looking for at least one thing to occur, and then the second type is conditional probability. But starting with that at least one mentality, let's go ahead and make sure that the concept is clear. So if I said I need at least five people to help me, which of the two following amounts would be acceptable? Is two people enough? No. It's not enough people. I need at least five, and two doesn't fit that bill. Is nine enough? Yeah, that's more than enough. I needed a minimum of five, and having extras is fine. The key here is the phrase at least means greater than or equal to. An example of where you have heard it before you need to be at least 18 years old to vote legally. I don't know if anybody's voting illegally. Um, but bottom line is at least is telling you the minimum amount you need of something. And so now let's go ahead and use it for looking at a probability, although we won't calculate the probability. I need, I'm going to pick three pets exactly, and I'm looking for getting at least one dog. So I could get exactly one dog of those three pets, dog, cat, cat. But if I need at least one dog, two dogs would also work. Remember, I'm saying order doesn't matter for this particular problem. So I've got two cases where I've got at least one dog out of three pets. But actually, all three dogs, all three pets could have been dogs. So when it comes to finding probability and we want to write the number of ways something can happen, it starts to get a little bit more complex. Here's one thing that's going to help us. This list excluded no dogs. If I had picked all cats for the three pets, that's the opposite of what I wanted. That's the complement of at least one dog. And that's how we're going to end up solving these probabilities. So to solve the probability where we select at least one dog, we would need the binomial formula, but we haven't learned that yet. So we are going to be able to find this probability, but specifically by using the complement, as I just mentioned. The secret, though, is we can only do this for probabilities that ask for at least one dog or whatever the item is. If it said at least three dogs, the complement is going to be too complex to use. So what will happen is we'll have a probability question for at least one item happening. Also, we haven't mentioned, but it has to be independent events, so with replacement or, you know, 5% or less of the population. And what we'll do is use the formula 1 minus the probability of the complement to the total number of tries. So, for example, we would have done it to, you know, the third power if we were picking three dogs. And the thing to realize here, the probability of the complement is the same as the probability that none occur. So the probability of picking zero dogs. And so now we'll go ahead and actually solve some problems. And I've recopied the formula for me, and it's not on your notes because it's just a line above on your notes. But in question 6a, Assume that the probability of a car being white is 0.6. If you randomly selected five cars, what is the probability at least one car is white? So we've got a probability question where we've got that at least one, and in this case it's white. So we know that the probability of a white car is 0.6. That was given. So the complement would be the probability of not white, so we got 0.4. Just doing 1 minus 0.6 gave us 0.4. And how many tries? Well, it said we selected five cars, so that's our number of tries. So I want to do 1 minus the complement to the number of tries. 1 minus 0.4 to the fifth power. Now hopefully you can just enter that straight through on your calculator. And when you do, you'll get the 0 0.9897, etc. But I did it in steps just in case your calculator doesn't work as advanced. Be careful on this one, though. When you do go to write it as a percent with one place after the decimal, that, that place after the decimal, the 9, is actually going to round up, which spills over. And I'm going to just get a flat 99%.
Of course, 99.0% is okay. Um, but I want to point out, in this final answer down here, when we took 1 minus the 0.01024, that, that decimal number was no cars. Well, no white cars. So 1 minus no white cars means that we had to have a minimum of one car, which is at least. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and solve the second one and check your answer. I'll wait for you. Okay, did you hit pause and come back? Did you get 99.2%? Let's go ahead and look at this one together. There's a 45% probability that Janet will wear green. What is the probability she wears green at least one day out of the next eight? So probability of green at least one day out of the next eight. Now the way some of these are, the ordering of this question is slightly different than the information above, but they both asked for probability, they both had a, at least one, and they gave us this set fixed amount of you know five cars or eight days. So we're given a probability of green, and so we can calculate the probability of not wearing green by taking one minus 0.45. And we know the number of tries was eight in this case, because we're looking at eight days. So we want to take one minus the complement of 0.55 to the number of tries, which was eight days. Again, if you can hit it straight through in your calculator, that's great, and get the 99.16 which would round to 99.2%.